because I did, I didn't know anything about it. Well, you, you got a problem. I, 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 I really, really want to hear it. I do. I want to hear it. I want to hear this. The daughter is in so much trouble. She talked to me as though I'm not her mother. And my sons have never disrespected me. One of the worst acts a mother can do is compare her children against each other. And I'm hearing you compare your daughters to your son. All right. Problems, it may be a problem, but it's the truth. When I say or express that I didn't have the problems with my sons like I, I have with my daughter. It's but you thing. had to compare. It could be that you So what I'm doing is I'm trying to needs. wait for a couple more people to get well, on. You know what? My, my daughter and I, uh, it's been kind of Once distant I kind of go since, over. Uh, Oh, for some years. How I feel, my opinion. I guess opinion. you can say it started when she was I'm just going middle to school. I'm just going to move forward and look at that. Yeah. Yeah. I came home from I have it playing in the background. Her and her friends was just smoking. The reason I'm going I live is because you know um, here. I had a lot upset. of... Yeah. Let me turn it down. Call me out of my name and ran out of the house. Bam. Can you hear me? About two weeks because I wouldn't let her come back. On two different lives right now. Um... But um, the reason I wanted to do this is because, again, so many people had an opinion on the show that I was recently on on Saturday, Ayanla Fix My Life. And I, I've never been ashamed of anything, of who I am at all. So everything I do wrong writer and different i own up to it you know so there's certain things you don't know that happen i know you see some of y'all seen the show on saturday they've been playing reruns and i know some of you guys have some questions so i'm willing to answer your questions but um before i answer the questions i want to make sure y'all have a full understanding that a lot that happened on Ayanla was not aired. Um, from the beginning, from the beginning of this process, um, I think I should get the person that got me on the show on here, Jen. Um, and I'll tell you guys behind the scenes what happened, what led up to the disagreement between Ayana and I how I felt about the show, what I got from the show, what I didn't get from the show. I just want to talk about it all. So, um, oh, she is here. Jen. My mom said I'm stubborn. I'm calling her Jen. Jen is my publicist who got me on this show. Hi, Jen. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I said I wanted to bring you on only because you're the one that got me on the show. Um, of course, the reason I'm doing this is just to give people a better understanding on what happened because there was a lot that wasn't shown. And I am not here to bash anybody, talk crazy about anybody. It's more so about speaking the truth, my truth, and that's it. And nice. then like that. No big, no big. I also wanted to clear up some things like a lot of people were saying some stuff and I'm like none of that is true um, because I know um, a lot of people were saying like uh, public, uh, publicity stunt it wasn't a publicity stunt I am I work very closely with Shay um, I know a lot intel about her life so I, I had the opportunity to get her on the show so I was like hey why not um it wasn't a paid show wasn't nothing like that um it was actually to get her on to um fix her life um it's not like her life is in shambles stuff so that's to be clear with that uh, i just feel like it was some areas at that particular time that can help her um get farther in her life career personal life everything but um it was a lot of stuff that was going on that i feel like aided in her attitude pretty much okay let's start from the beginning of this when i was talking to jen about first initially going on the show 
I was kind of scared to go. go. Mm-hmm. I said you didn't want to go. I didn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't want to go, but you know, at the end of the day, if it's something that can help me, I'm open to it. She convinced me, and I was open to it. From the beginning, we've been working with them off and on for what it was like eight months before. Mm-hmm. I was able to actually go down and do the show. We were supposed to shoot in February, but because of COVID, we couldn't. So it was pushed months later. Anyhow, the whole process of eight months, they were telling us how this process is different. Don't look at it um, as if it's a show you've done before. Look at it Mm -hmm. as something different because she wants to help you. She wants to enlighten you. She wants to send you down the right path. So we don't look at this as a TV show. We look at this as an opportunity to receive help from from an amazing person. Great. Keep in mind, I don't watch the show, um, and I should have. That was my fault. I should have done my research on what I was dealing with. I should have done my research on who I was dealing with, you know, like the type of show this is. But they were steady pushing constantly. This is not that type of show. It's not no drama. You know what I mean? Like, we really want to help you. So after a few months, I'm like, well, you know what? We're going to do this, Jen. We might as well go ahead and bring my family in because most of my issues are with my mother, my you know, my, my siblings, and there are unresolved issues that's been lingering for years. So they wanted just me. I made the suggestion to bring my family. So I'm like, okay. They wanted a couple of us in the beginning. And I'm like, if you didn't, if you're not going to take my entire family, it just, it won't work because my core family, my mother, my father, my brothers, and my sister, if, if we're not all there, it won't work. So they agreed and allowed everybody to come. My father backed out. He just wasn't interested. That's another story I got to tell you about later because he called me today and broke down. But that's another story. So because if you notice every show that I've ever been on, I never really brought my family. The only time you ever seen a sibling or anybody close to me, my immediate family, is my brother. For the most part, both my brothers came on Love and Hip Hop. Joe did a, did one season. That's the Dr. Joe. He did one. Well, I'm sorry, one episode. And MJ was on last season of Love and Hip Hop. That's, and I've been on TV for years. But I did that for a reason because I understand the dynamic of reality TV. And sometimes if you're not strong enough, it can definitely ruin situations. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not prepared to go through certain reality shows. And the type of show that I'm on, loving hip hop, I, I didn't want my family on there like that. Um, because we're we 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 have issues. We we're not that tight. And I've always I kept quiet about it. I didn't speak up on my family and my family issues. I just kind of dealt with it outside of whatever I was doing. Anyway, if I would have known that this TV show was going to TV show would go a certain way, I would not have invited. I would not have invited my family at all. So when I went on the show, everything was all cool and copacetic. I never met this lady. I never watched the show none of that. So everything was cool. We did three days and y'all only seen two hours, which with commercials, like an hour and 15 minutes of the show. We shot three days. Well, my family did. First thing, everything was cool. We all went in, did our individual interviews and we kind of just expressed what we were here for. Great. Second um, day is a day that I met Ayala for the first time ever. So what bothered me in the beginning, what y'all didn't see, we, I got up to greet her you know, to try to shake her hand. And she initially like, oh, no, 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 COVID, COVID. You know, we ain't doing that. <laughs> it was all these subliminal shots throughout the day. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, you want to be cautious about COVID. Cool. Backed off. She started talking to me. And what you didn't see was Jan and I asked them not to mention certain things about an ex-boyfriend from TV. I didn't want to mention that. I didn't want to mention, you know, certain, certain cast members. I didn't want to mention anything about reality tv or anything i've done in the past because i wanted to focus on my relationship with my mother and my brothers and my sister and that's it because that's the that that's important to me reality tv great whatever that's my job i like being me on tv cool but when it comes to my family i move a little different right okay so brought up the ex-boyfriend started talking a little a little greasy about my father telling me he abandoned me. He wasn't there for me. Just saying all of these different things. And I'm like, that's not true. So we kind of going back and forth because I'm like, that's not true. My father did not abandon me. He was still there. During the divorce, yes, we had issues. But my father 
never just up and left. He was, his presence was always there. So I'm like, I, I can't sit here and allow you to assassinate my father because that's not true. So we're going back and forth, she and I. You didn't see that. I'm like, all right, cool. So then she started, we had a conversation about my current, my current situation with the guy I'm dealing with now. She told me to leave him. And I'm like, I'm not leaving him. You're not ready for a relationship. You're broken and you need to fix yourself and all this. And I'm like, I understand where you're coming from, but I'm not leaving my man. I'm not broken. I know exactly what I want. I want a husband and kids. I want my business to flourish. Like, I'm not broken to where I blame every man for what one did. I have more issues with my mother. And yes, and then on top of that, the things we asked her not to talk about were things I evolved from, moved from, or like, why open old wounds? Like, what is the point of that? I didn't understand that. So that's why I'm like steady, like, and I'm steady letting her come at me sitting there like, all right, she steady mentioned this shit we told her not to talk about. She didn't want to greet me properly. She like kind of talking to me like she my grandma or something. And I'm like, okay, this is different, I guess. You know, I've never been to therapy before. I'm sure it don't go like this, but let me ride this way. I'm like, okay. So they sent me downstairs for a couple hours. She's upstairs talking to my, my brothers. They say, all right, Shay Ayala wants you. I go back upstairs. I don't know what she spoke about with my brothers. I haven't, I haven't even seen them at this point all that day or the day before. So I go upstairs and she's like, come on, Shay, come grab my hand, baby. Let's go walk in here. And in my mind, I'm like, a couple hours ago, you, COVID was around and you just kind of subliminally pushed me to the side. Oh no, icky, icky. But now you want to grab my hand and pull me to the room. All right. Still conflicting with her, but all right, this lady different. Go in the room. She like, sit right here. Your brother's got something to say to you. Don't say nothing. Like the way she was talking to me was so aggressive. And I'm like, all right, sit there. Keep in mind, I told Ayana when I had my one-on-one, -on -one, I do not want this to be any type of um, situation where everybody pointing the finger at me. This is not an intervention about Shay. This is about my entire family. So let's figure that out. I sit down, my brothers say what they have to say. And I'm like, I feel, they say, I feel like you're rude and disrespectful, MJ. Here goes Joe. I feel like you rude and disrespectful more than you think. I'm like, okay. So I'm waiting. I'm like, okay, this is cool. They get to speak how they want, how they feel, and I want to speak how I feel. She like, no, shut up. Drag me, pull me out. So I'm like, you feel entitled, MJ. And Joe, you think you know everything, which that's why I was here to explain to you guys, you're not entitled. You know what I mean? Don't nobody owe you anything, bro. I love you, but I don't owe you anything. But I will always be here for you. Joe, you're you're a doctor. You're a therapist. You're you're a psychologist. Everything around us revolves around that. One, I just want you to be my brother for once. So that's, that's the issues I wanted to talk to them about. I couldn't say anything because she pulled me out. So she pulling me out. She telling me to shut up. And she told me to shut up a few times. They only showed you once. And... The way she was talking to me, I was getting so irritated from everything because I didn't want certain things mentioned, which was mentioned. I just wanted to come there to speak my mind, couldn't speak my mind. And I didn't understand like this process with you yelling at me and barking at me. I'm like, I hear you. You don't have to bark at me. I hear you. I'm right here. I'm going to listen to everything you got to say. But she treated me like she knew me or something. And I just kept feeling all this disrespect from her. And I'm like, and then another thing she did when we sat down, oh, I watched you. I Googled you. Yeah, I know exactly how you are. As if she had some type of pre preconceived notion about me before she even met me to sit down and have a conversation. So I'm like, this lady don't like me. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. Because I'm like, you coming in here talking crazy to me. You talking bad about my father. You bringing up my ex dude. Like, I don't want to talk about you telling me to meet, leave my current dude. None of this was shown. So when she pulled me in the room, I'm like, you know what? I got to go. The best thing I did was leave. I left. I'm like, because I didn't want it to escalate. So I left. Get in the car. I'm like, can you please take me to my room? They drive away. Another thing you didn't see. They take me, drive me up about five, ten blocks up the street. Like, they about to take me to the room driver get a car he, clearly they said bring her back he busted you so i'm like excuse me where are you going can you just take me to my room because i ain't want none of this to escalate when i left let me calm down regroup come back new me no the driver said they told me to bring you back i said please don't bring me back this is going to escalate i don't want to deal with that just take me to the room let me chill bring me back anyway here she come where she at bam on the window doo, doo, doo. driver raised the window down i'm like this lady is driving me crazy. Like, lady, I hear you. She just going in. You ain't a woman of your word. At this point, I'm like, you know what? 
I should have never brought my family here because I started to feel like this was more of a TV show for ratings versus something to actually help my family. If I ever see a therapist again, I would never go on national television to do it. And I'm definitely going to see a therapist. Okay. Why did you bring me back there to bark at me some more and yell at me some more? So now I'm fed up. I'm like, okay, you want to shut. That's what you want. Because you brought me back here for something. You want to yell at me and cuss me out some more? All right, let me give you what you want. So then I told her effort process. That's where it came up. It was a series of situations that happened to lead up to me just not wanting to do it at all anymore because it wasn't what I thought. You know what I mean? Then her ego got me in the way. I don't want her here. She can't come back. The, the, the. Wrote me a letter. I responded to her letter. And in the letter, I apologized to her, but I told her in the letter, I feel like you owe me an apology as well because I wasn't arguing with the air. I was arguing about myself. You started to bark, bark, bark. And like when you bark, bark, bark at somebody, somebody going to bite your ass back. And I ain't even bite. I pinched her ass. I'm like, look, I don't want to have nothing else to do with this. You know what I mean? This is not what I thought. I need to get my mind together. You got me here. You cussing me out, going off on me, calling me a fool. I'm like, I got to go. This is crazy. Okay, so, you. okay, so you hear me now? Mm-hmm. Okay, so first, like, again, it was no check. Like, everybody felt like, oh, she went on the show for a check. No, sweetie, it wasn't no check. This, this, people don't play with their real life like this. Like, I don't know who y'all around, but sweetie, there wasn't no check. If it was a check, they would have had to pay way more bigger for me to deal with this. Sorry. It was, it was a lot. A whole lot. And it's a, a lot of people it was a lot for three days. But let me yeah. let me tell the story before you go into what they saying to you, so I don't have to jump all the way around. So when I raised the window up, I finally was able to go back to my room. So the um basically I felt like this is my opinion as a therapist, when you deal with so many different people and their emotions, you're trying to get them to open up. You're trying to get up in here mentally and figure out what's going on with you so I can help you. So when you're dealing with so many different people and, and emotions and things like that, I'm I'm sure there's certain approaches. Like you, you will take a certain approach for a certain person just to try to get to them. You don't take the same approach with everybody because everybody is different. So if you felt like I was a firecracker or you felt like you watched me and I'm this and I'm that, all these negative things you have to say about me, why you come at me with a bark? You know what I mean? But when I watched the show, once I got back to the room, once I raised the window up, went back to the room, I'm like, let me figure out what I'm dealing with and research her. This is what she do. You know, she kind of, you know, she she come in, she's very loving. She made me feel like she was very loving. And I'm not saying she out, she's not. This is just how I felt. She came in, made me feel like I was very loving and then would try to find ways to kind of poke at you, to to lift you, to 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 to, to, to get it out of you to, you know, raise you from one to 10 and then bring you back down. Oh, I love you, baby. It's all right. Everybody, she's doing the same approach with this kind of Auntie Patty, you know, type of approach or Grandma Ma type of approach. And I'm like, lady, I don't know you. I've never seen you. I've never met you. I'm trusting this process with a complete stranger. And with this complete tr stranger, I chose to trust this process with you bring up a bunch of situations I asked you not to bring up. This is what you're doing, but you want me to trust you during this process. But so by the time you violated so many different things we asked you not to do, by the time you telling me to shut up and not speak to my brothers, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak my mind to my brothers because that's why I'm here. And actually at this point, I don't trust her because it was too many conflicting situations happening. Anyway, I, I Google her research her and I'm like, okay, this is how she is, cool. They continue the next day with my family. Her ego gets in the way. She don't want me there. Oh, she can't come back here. She can't, the, 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 as if she never called me a fool. As if she never cussed me out, telling me to shut up. As if she wasn't disrespecting me at all. So I called my family. This is the funny part. I called my, my well, my family called me. This is when Jen is on the phone. Jen, you could vouch for this. We were, how many of us were on the three-way on that call that they showed on TV? It was very, very chopped and screwed, but who cares? It was me, Jen, Joe, my brother. MJ was clearly there with my mother. But the way my mother was talking, my mother don't talk like this. So I'm like, Mom, are those people in front of you? She gonna tell me no. I knew it. I'm like, and I told you that when we got the phone. I was like, they were filming because my mother don't talk like that. I know my mother. And when, when she's stern, I feel it. I ain't feel none of that. I ain't feel nothing she had going on. So 
they filmed her. They basically got my mother and MJ to ask to get me to come back. But on that phone call, I didn't understand how my family was there. I brought us there to to have a session with her as a whole. But you guys continued the session the second day without me. So I'm looking like I fought for you, MJ. I fought for you because you know there was a possibility you wasn't gonna be there. So I fought for my without my if you're not taking both my brothers, my sister, myself, and my mother, just not interested. So it's like, I guess I expected the same loyalty from my family. So I got upset. Like, why are you guys there? Because if it was a situation where you guys left, I'm with you. I'm rolling with you. And that just didn't happen. So when they called, I was upset. Like, why are you still there? And I'm not there. She's trying to prove a point by pushing me to the side. This was all about me. Keep that in mind. This had nothing to do with my family initially. I made it about my family because that's what I wanted. Anyway, I agreed to go back. And once we sat down, they told me, I already knew she was going to leave the room. I already knew they told me she was going to leave the room. I'm like, that's fine. Because she doesn't, you know, can you apologize? I said, I apologized in the letter. And on top of that, I think we both owe each other an apology. Let's be two grown women and apologize to each other because that is my elder at the end of the day. That is my elder. So if you, I didn't cuss her out, I didn't call her out her name. I said that's her process and that violated her and that hurt her. So I apologized to her for that. But I never got one for the shut ups, be quiet, mentioning the ex, talking greasy about my father, telling me to leave my man. I never got apology for her, aggress her aggressive ways. Like it was just like either my way or no way. And I get it, this your show. So never again, I, I can't. I can't do that with my family never again. But that's a, that's the synopsis of what happened while they're trying to make it seem like, oh my God, Shay said that's the process. Oh my God, this lady told me to shut up, never come back, talking greasy about my dad. Like, did you not, were you there? I'm trying to figure out where oh, the, the whole production oh. team and the, the producers calling you and directors calling you, Jen, as if you didn't hear what she had to say. They just, Shay, 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 Shay. Oh, um. A lot of like people keep on saying like Jen, you you didn't do your research. Yeah, I did research. I sent Shay um, videos and things, everything of the show. But every situation, every process is totally different. You, everybody's not going to get the same show every time, or the same process, or every treatment every time you show. get on the show. I never show. watched the video. Yeah. I never got a video. I never watched it. I never cared because I thought this was one of those. Ron yeah, I've seen Shay. I've seen her several shows. So, and mind you, um, she'll she, we do several things. So, she probably was like, "Hey, I just do my process when I get there." But, um, my so don't don't discard, discard me. I do my work. I'm, I'm a very good publicist. So let's get that clear. And secondly, um, I do as far as holding her accountable. I. I don't have to hold her accountable in public. Me and her had a conversation, and that's pretty much what you guys need to know. And um, as far as these things, to me, um, as far as Ayana with the COVID and all that, that type of stuff, like I told Shay, that, that shouldn't even have mattered, but that mattered to her. So you can't really tell people how to react in these situations. And accountability, that's all y'all screaming. So what kind of accountability are you guys wanting her to do? Was she supposed to kiss Miss Ayana's feet? Like, I'm, I'm confused at this point. Because, I mean, she did send an apology letter. She apologized there. It, but it's several things that you guys did not see. So I'm just trying so, to oh, figure wait, wait, out. Wait. On the third day when I had the final with my family. Uh, um, She's grown, correct. The first time um, I had the, well, the la when we had the final one-on-one -on -one with my family where it was my family just kind of talking to me and explaining how they felt uh when ayana ayana came back in and she's like okay shay you can excuse yourself all right bye left i don't want no drama i'm out peace got in the car producers come out there asking me shay will you have a one-on-one -on -one with ayana this is another thing you didn't see and i'm like yeah i have a one-on-one -on -one with her that's fine but i hope we're gonna apologize to each other because she felt she didn't want to apologize is what i'm assuming she turned it down and said she was going to talk to me outside the show so we don't feel like cameras are in her face. I was like, okay, that's perfect. That, that was perfect for me. I didn't want to do anything on camera. I wanted to do it, you know, one-on-one -on -one with me and her. For whatever reason, she changed her mind 
Jen and canceled that. So there was no final with she and I. That was it. It was done. It was over. And how I know they were happy with what they got. It was a two hour special first episode. They blew so this up. Then, what's the point of the lie? The point of the lie was because there was a lot of bad comments. Oh no, that's probably from people, that no, that's probably from people that just got on here. So since you were late and I told you seven o'clock and it's seven twenty nine. Let me explain it to you, Joe. And nobody's bashing Ayana. I feel like the process was well needed and I feel like it was a good process. So I'm I'm not bashing her by fire and I no shade's not bashing her. Um, it just was a lot don't, of questions. Don't, here, Jen, don't you know? answer any more. Don't answer any more of that because in the beginning of this at seven o'clock, as I stated when I was going live, I said I'm not here to bash her. I already said that. So if you lay and you yeah. didn't get it from the beginning, you can go and watch it when I post it. So anyway, I came on this live so because so many people had so many questions and so many people had so many opinions and I had emails and DMs. This is not just for me. This has been happening with my sister, both my brothers, my yeah. mama too. So I'm like, well, I'm just the type to face my issues straight on. Like, you know, I don't, I'm not ashamed of nothing I've done. So if you have any questions or anything, I was willing to come on here and answer it. If you don't have any questions, I understand. Get off. Simple. This ain't for you. That's it. It ain't no big deal. Just push the button and log off. So now I kind of explain more of what happened on the show. Um, I can tell you what I got from it. Um... The positive that I got from it was I had a situation with my baby brother and I hadn't been talking to him for months. I'm talking months. So we're back on track with communication. It's not like it used to be, but we're back on track. Another positive thing was things have been rocky with my mother. And I know she said a couple things on the show, but I talked to her. We That's my mother. I only have one. I'm never going to allow a comment or anything my mother says to stop me from loving her or or accepting an apology or moving forward like it's a lot of things that's going to happen in life you don't like you can't sit and drag it either you accept it move on and know not to do it again or you sit there in your sorrow and weep and i'm not like something can happen to me tomorrow dead and gone and i got i'm, I'm holding grudges with everybody i don't got time for that so no matter what my brother said no matter what my mother said or my sister we are a family um we we have issues in our family like everybody else and i'm sure if i open you guys's pandora's box you wouldn't like what i have to say about you guys but your stuff is closed so it's easy to point the finger and judge me it's very very easy very easy to do that and i don't mind i give you opportunities to do that because i'm a reality personality i'm on tv like you have an opinion and you're entitled to that so because you have your opinion i want your opinion to be based on more than what you saw kind of a more broad perspective and give you more so you can have a uh, maybe a different opinion or add to your opinion i ain't trying to change your mind it's more so if you want to have an opinion on something let me give it all to you now well let's take some questions i'm not taking we're not taking no um negative nancy well well let me log off and log back on and take the questions. If y'all got questions, log back on. Let me log off and log back on. Okay. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I'm trying to... 